Folks, test time. Uh, there we go. Test. We have 35 minutes, so once you're done, well, we'll see when everyone's done. But if you take... Uh, how does it work if you do it online? Is it like you do it at this time? Yeah, yeah, it opens up. Uh, it actually opens up at 10. Okay. So then it's time limited for 35 minutes. Just FYI, the extra boots were out about like an hour before oh. they were invalid. Oh, that's too bad. They're yeah. supposed to close at 9.30. That's, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I said about it. So yeah. Sorry about that. That's awesome. I thought that's they were the both, size are It's good. good to know anyway that it's that precise or yeah. imprecise. <clears throat> Thanks, Julia. All right. There you go. Almost done. Terrific. We can start. So, today we're talking about media operations. And that means sort of what's it like to work in a, a radio station, a television station, a cable company, or I really can't speak to a, a, a social media type outfit. Hopefully going to remedy that and do like a work study type of thing. Not this summer, but anyway, what do you care? So <laughs> what's it like in a radio station? Well, uh, these are all businesses just like uh, any other business. So while we tend to think of media just in terms of production or the content that we consume, don't forget that the behind it all are, you know, people who are working uh, and so we might ignore the idea that, you know, in any station, you've got to have somebody who does the hiring, you know, you've got to have accounting, purchasing to buy stuff, uh, and maintenance. So uh, this would be, you know, like any other large business, which needs a pretty big uh, space to work in and stuff. There are, there are all these uh, uh, functions that go on in a, in a station as well. You guys, I mean, have you seen the old Cron building still on uh, South Van Ness? On Van Ness. Yeah, yeah, is it still empty? Yeah. Is it still empty? Is it? I haven't been over there in a while. It's definitely still there, but yeah. I don't know. If, I, I've never seen anybody like come in or out of it. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they moved on top of KGO down the Embarcadero, so that's, you know, because they couldn't sustain that huge building, but I'm surprised. Why don't they just call it quits? Because <laughs> someone invested nine hundred million dollars in that license, hard that <laughs> it's hard to let that go. Like write it off completely. It's a tax uh, write off. Uh, gosh, that's a lot of money for that. Some, you know, again, the the rumor is eventually NBC will buy it after they, you know, just run it down to Make being almost worthless. Yeah, well, you know, NBC you wanted. They, yeah, exactly. It's already probably you know two thirds of what. You know, maybe it's going at five, six hundred million. Who knows? I mean, that's a bargain. I mean, yeah, there's a huge. If you to buy them, why, why, so why, like, they'll probably even get it for less. Yeah, eventually. If yeah. The guy's gonna, or the family or whoever of this, eventually gonna have to sell. Yeah, so it's young media in the East Coast who who bought it for nine hundred million and who you know lost, definitely losing money on it. Whenever they actually sell it, they have to confess how much they lost. Oh man! Or they could try like um, what's that station like Current? Yeah. Try a different format and like you know use local news. Well, Current I think did. I mean, does it still exist? I think, no, no, they no. sold to Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera yeah. and Al Jazeera doesn't exist now. It exists as an app, but not as a cable channel. Or YouTube. Or YouTube. I watch yeah, it on YouTube. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and you know that's the other thing is if you can reach a similar audience through YouTube, why bother going through all the expense of being on cable? Right. Yeah, all of that. You know. Um, and over the top too, if you can cut deals with, you know, I don't know, who are those people with the little set top boxes anymore? The Roku. Uh, Roku, right, yeah. Sling, Sling has its own original stuff as well as allowing you to. Uh, Sling's still around? Yeah, it does, yeah, yeah. We actually bought. Sling back in the day when it really? Yeah. Oh, cool, you're such an early adopter, Rick. I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. I used to, I used to. <laughs> okay, we bought a very cool little mobile setup they have uh, which can take, they do the, the games here at City College with it now. It takes three cameras, uh, sends them over Wi-Fi, high definition video, and you can switch from an iPad. And it was like uh, under 5,000 bucks, I believe. So wow. it's pretty amazing, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so you can do like your own little remotes with, with their product. So it's pretty, pretty interesting. 
So, so back to uh, you know, back to, to this story. The general manager of a of a radio or television station is probably the best paid person there, and then after that would be your high profile talent, I guess. You know, your your Pam Moores or whoever. Those anchors do make more than just about anybody else. Engineering, so you got to have someone who's going to you know meet those FCC requirements and make sure the signal is good. Otherwise, you're you're sort of dead in the water if your signal is no good. No one's going to tune into you. You'll lose all your ratings and stuff. Uh, production. So there's very little production still going on in radio stations, which is unfortunate for people thinking, oh, I got audio production skills. Can I, you know, use them? Um, you you do if you're working in promotions, uh, or if you're on-air talent. Those are two places where you actually would use production skills. Uh, because you're often like putting together sort of as on-air talent, they might say, okay, you know, we, we need some spots. Will you do them? And if you can produce them and voice them at the same time, terrific. You'll get the job. Um, and then in promotions, they, they always need some kind of, you know, stuff they can put out in social media or whatever. So you do wind up producing some stuff there. On the other hand, in television, you know, a big part of the personnel in any television station is devoted to television production just because it's um, you know it's labor intensive to produce news and news is still very profitable for those local t TV stations and so they you know they're gonna have uh, they're gonna have videographers going out shooting the stories uh, they'll have reporters who more often will go out by themselves with a camera to shoot stories uh, they need technicians who will have, you know, drive those microwave trucks that send the, you know, beam the location stuff back to uh, the station. Within the station, they got to have people, you know, studio hands, people working in the control rooms who switch stuff. A lot of that is being automated, but there are still positions in that for sure. So, so there's, there's a lot of, and, and then the news gathering operation is going to have news editors, reporters, writers, editors, and you know people on the assignment desk who tell what stories are recovering who who do i send out to cover that story so so it, it is you know easily 20 people in a station like ktvu or cron or you know any, any of the network affiliates maybe even more and that's on the local level and then you know we're not really covering the national level here but that exists too uh, so programming, you know, you gotta you gotta fill those hours of uh, of airtime, especially if you're cron and you don't have a, uh, a network uh, that's providing you with a lot of programming all day long. You only have a little few hours in prime time that you've paid for, so you gotta fill it in with lots of other, you know, locally produced stuff. And a lot of that is news because that's who you've got already working for you doing news. Um, otherwise, you know, you got, again, you gotta fill those hours. Uh, if we're talking radio, then um, you know the typical setup will be uh, you'd have a program director, um, a news director. If we're talking one of those AM stations that does traffic and news a lot, uh, a music director. If we're talking you know an FM station that is in a music format, and sometimes people will wear two hats. Like I remember the KOIT GM was also the music director, um, so. People doubling up in all sorts of ways. Um, production director, announcer, depends on the size, but definitely again, the AM traffic and news stations are very big and they do a lot of news gathering, so they're going to have a lot of personnel. The music stations, less. Um, there may not even be a music director if all of the uh, playlists come out of you know San Antonio if you're on uh, iHeart Music or something or some some other place that actually programs for you. Uh, they still need actual DJs. They need people who are called board operators who run the board when there's no DJ there. You still need a human being in the station triggering playback and stuff. They may have news, but you know since the FCC no longer requires it, it's pretty thin. It's sort of like celebrity news type of stuff. Uh, but again, in you know a KCBS or a KGO type of show, uh, big AM station, you're going to have uh, lots of personnel doing that. Uh, sales and promotions. So this is on the revenue side. These are people bringing in the bucks, and so 
these people are highly valued in the station. Uh, okay, so within sales, you're going to have sales associates and you're going to have a sales manager, at least one. You may even have a regional sales manager who covers, you know, three states or something and sets the objectives. Uh, the sales manager is typically creating the quotas and trying to, you know, motivate the sales associates to get as much business as they possibly can. And the sales manager often is designing all of the uh, sales support material, like the laptop presentations and everything that they go out and do. And sales manager may also close the bigger accounts, you know, the, the deals, uh, if they don't really trust the sales associates to, uh, to do that. Um, then there's also this, this weird little thing, actually, in radio. Um, and this is a potential thing you do as an intern in a television or a radio station. When they sell spots, they have to prove that the spots have actually aired. And so they constantly record the signal off the air. And then either an intern or somebody in what's called the traffic department. So this is not like saying, you know, <laughs> there's a traffic jam on the 280 or something. This is the traffic of spots over the air. So they record all the spots, then they cut them up, and they send recordings of them to the clients to prove that they actually aired at a given time. Um, so it's just it's a way of confirming that you're getting what you paid for. Um, and otherwise, the traffic uh, department schedules the spots. Like, remember we saw those spreadsheets as to when everything's available? So that was, uh, that's part of their job. So traffic, uh, in terms of uh, station operations, is is not the traffic report, which is typically now done by private companies that, uh, you know, they, they make a deal with a local radio station or several of them, and they'll, you know, they, they specialize. They've got the helicopters. They've got, you know, the, the announcer staff and stuff. So they specialize in that. So that doesn't usually happen in a station anymore. Then promotions is uh, obviously you're, you're working with other companies. Uh, two things. Either you are, uh, you know, trying to drive audience to your station. So you'll be you know, getting billboards and back of buses or placing media buys in other media because you want to get an audience coming to you. Uh, or otherwise, you're working creatively with uh, companies, businesses, to go in on a blood drive or on a summer festival to heighten the visibility for both of you by working together. So there's, there's often barter. Uh, or cooperative agreements, you know, going on in promotions and stuff. So, uh, and this apparently is a really fun and uh, open door to radio f for sure uh, in that um, they need a lot of people working with them, like sort of street team uh, who will just go out with them on weekends. But uh, we do know people who have gotten jobs within the radio station afterwards from that type of thing. So. If you're, if you're gregarious and you like, you know, spending a lot of time out talking to people and just doing those kinds of activities, um, which usually means you're young and don't have a family, uh, that this, this can be a way into working in radio stations and stuff. So um, television pretty much, it's, it's like radio, except it's bigger. Uh, because there's national advertising, uh, you don't just have a sales manager and a regional sales manager and associates. You also have to deal with, you know, the, on a national level, getting the network uh, uh, commercials and spots and stuff all put in place. Um, yeah, it's just there more money flows through radio, through television than through than through radio. Um, so yeah, like I said, there's a pretty sizable investment in, um, in television infrastructure, big studios, lots of cameras, uh, the sets have to be, they have to look good. That's, all that is kind of expensive. And all of this is directed towards producing news, right? Even, there's not even very many of those kind of afternoon talk shows or you know, like get a studio audience and talk about something controversial. Most of it is just news. And as we said, the reason for that is, as a local station, you get to keep 50% of the uh, opportunities when the network is supplying you with content. But in the news hours, when you're producing everything, you keep 100% of what you sell in terms of advertising around the news. So it, it's, it's still you know, the most lucrative thing. 
Um, so, you know, a lot of it goes on in the studio. Some of it is remote. And um, unfortunately, technology is getting better and better, so it's shrinking the personnel that's necessary. Um, Whereas you used to have a team of people in a television control room putting together the news, which was always a live production. Uh, now it's typically one technician with uh, a, you know, a, a switcher, which is controlled by a computer and all kinds of macros that are pre-programmed. And when we went to KTVU last year, I think, uh, with another class, that guy was in there around 11 o'clock in the morning when there was no news program, just programming in the next events. And it was just like, Huge computer screens, so they'll they'll click a button and you know a camera will be taken, plus the audio will come up for the uh, performers who are supposed to be on set at that time. All the radio mics are kind of numbered, so that is all brought up automatically. You know that the anchor will have number two. His audio will go up. It's it's like as much as possible is automated. The cameras are on uh, robotic uh, pedestals, so <laughs> so they call you know we all know what tripods are, right? They mount the cameras, but these are these are on uh, either tracks or even just wheels, and there are people in the control room who can pan and zoom and move the camera uh, just automatically like that. So There's nobody like wheeling the camera around. There's one person for union requirements. There is a human operator on the floor. And there's a floor manager who's kind of the director of what needs to go on. And that's it. There, wow. again, there used to be three, four times as many people on the floor. Yeah. yeah. Um, and when I was at NAB uh, just a couple of weekends ago, I saw a couple of things. But I saw kind of an AI-enabled small news studio like that, which basically the cameras were smart enough to track the performers without being controlled even from a control room by somebody. Like for instance, Jody operates in here, all these cameras, she knows when to take you guys when you talk, she can follow me around. Uh, a lot of that now will be taken over by AI, which will just kind of say, okay, here's a guy who's moving, he's talking, so show him and track the camera with him. And it's good enough to do that. So. Maybe one day I'll be here all by myself completely. <laughs> and the other thing is, you know when the weatherman is kind of gesticulating over the, the weather map, you know? So in the studio, there's a green screen, and they project the weather map onto that. So you can see the weather guy is usually looking at a monitor over there and pointing at something that he can't see, because this is just green. And uh, at the Sony booth at NAB, I saw a system where it doesn't have to be green. It doesn't, there's, a, there's an actor just walking around a regular room, and the AI knows that the actor is moving, and so removes everything else. I just heard about that. You don't need a blue screen anymore. You don't, the AI could take out, yeah. this is the person, just like using the same technology that driver, yeah, like driverless cars use. I, I guess, yeah. Wow. You know, it's probably not good enough for like super high-end effects and stuff, where they still have human operators who go in frame by frame, you know, and take the exact outline. Right. But for news, it's not, yeah. yeah, for news, it's just like, this is, this is the shape of things to come, yeah. So uh, for the exams, or uh, whatever the general trend is, you know, the better the technology, the smaller the, <laughs> so tech gets improved and uh, jobs in production shrink, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> So I'll draw up arrow down. So that's that's definitely one tendency that we're seeing, unfortunately, you know, because it's it's jobs that are going. Uh, and part of that, as we said, these these uh, the pedestals, which are they hold the cameras, are now you know robotic. And I don't want to get too uh, off topic. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the technology called deep fake? No. What is it? Um, it's just this group of like, uh, like hackers or computer like engineers. Uh huh. Basically, made uh, they can like make you say anything. Like they did Obama. Okay. And his lips move and he looks like he's talking for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they make him say words he's never said. Yeah. And it sounds okay. just like. That's a scary thing. Yeah. yeah. I can see that happening. It was coming like. Yeah. I did see on YouTube an Adobe product which can you know analyze a voice and then. Play it back. Oh, really? you know, yeah, and that, was supposed to be the closest. This was a couple of, couple of years ago, actually. So, but these guys sound like they also animate lips. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's really scary. scary. Didn't uh, who's the guy that did Get Out? 
Jordan, Jordan Peele? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did the Obama thing. Like, to, oh, the angle. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. 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 It was oh, right. uh, how, like, that you could do it. How oh. scary it is. And wow. How anyone can do it. Yeah. You know, like, what's going to happen when you can't believe what you see? Anyway? Exactly. Yeah, that was right. his whole argument. Yeah. Scary. So back to exam type questions. So just in terms of technology, the pedestals are getting robotic. So pedestal is like a tripod, but on wheels. And then the other key component in television that's become really automated is the switcher, right? Which switches between cameras. So in this case, like, as I said, one person is, you know, you used to have a director said, ready one, take one, ready two, take two and stuff. Now it literally is just a guy with you know, clicking the space bar on the, on the computer and everything else just changes around. No need for an audio person. So, so these, are, uh, these are all questions on the exam. I'm, I've got the cahoots open here. I'm just looking to make sure we hit the right things. Um, and so another thing, yeah, okay, another, we're making a list of exam questions, but why not? General manager, right, the GM, so this is, on the administrative side, is involved in, as we said, you know, uh, planning and goals, evaluating employees, hiring. So these kinds of uh, business operations that would all be under the purview of the general manager. Um, just to avoid talking too much, because it is like an awful tendency. Even though you guys are real generous and jump in with great conversational topics. Um, Cron puts out once in a while, I don't know, it's a thing that um, uh, they have this series they call Backstory, which is, uh, I don't know who actually shoots these, but uh, it's kind of behind the scenes at Cron, which is, it's, it can be quite interesting. Uh, and most other stations won't give you a look, but uh, these, these guys, uh, you, you could, you'll see Pam, you'll see all kinds of folks. So you could watch a little bit of this. To Gary Radnich. Get, see this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've heard him say some stuff which was really ill-considered. I heard him one night say uh, he was advising students against getting a degree in broadcasting and say, yeah, anybody, come on, we'll put you on. <laughs> I was like, what is this? That's hilarious. <laughs> what is this, <laughs> you know, that guy's such a character, though. <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. Why don't we have any sound? Gary Radnich, he's like... He's, he's on here. Yeah, he's on here. I don't even know. Nope. He doesn't even do just sports. He does everything for them, right? Like, oh, yeah? I don't know. Yeah, everyone does a lot of different things there. So this is up. Okay, watch out. I haven't had a co-anchor in years. Oh. We've met before, but now I'm a fit. Well, welcome to Ron. Thank you. You're welcome. This is going to be great for me to have somebody else to share the newscast with, and there's more work to go around, so I can share that with Steve Avison, who is the newest member of our team. And he's from San Francisco. He has a huge family here. That's where I grew up, right there. 328 30th Avenue. The San Francisco Chronicle. Not by me. Uh, yeah. Neighbor, yeah. One twenty six. Right there, and I would sit here yes, sir. and hold the papers yes. each morning and deliver papers all in this neighborhood. Okay, Steve. Uh, my papers put on my desk. That's Jerry. I said, uh, it's a <laughs> uh, rich I, I juggled. He juggles. Fire. I walk the tightrope. Uh, 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 we have a tightrope. <laughs> wow, now there's a talent. I just say when, when your anchor starts to do that. I don't think that's such a good thing after all. Well, uh, why'd you make a snake? Because he could juggle. <laughs> See, I told you that's how I told you. And you did pass. I think you passed the test. Would you all agree? Yes. He claims he has worked in all 50 markets. He has done a story, be it on the internet, be it on the news, whatever. And I can't, uh, I can't wait to razz him. I'm going to say, South Dakota. If he stumbles, I know I got him. This is the first official rehearsal. How much time? Anybody else? Steve, can you hear me OK? I can. Pam, you got me? Hello. OK, so we're starting in 1 minute, 20 seconds. That's what the clock's OK? The news at 10 is next. This is what they're telling me in my ear. So the news at 10 is next. We're going to start in uh, 20 seconds. Stand by to one animations uh, music by Q-Up. Q-Up. 
Kilo. Happening now at 10, emergency road repairs underway. We have an up-close look inside that sinkhole that opened up on a busy Bay Area street. This is Josh. Why does it look like that? Wasn't there supposed to be video there? Or full screen or something? Yeah. Josh, what? Hey, so why is he looking at the wrong camera? Can you have Pam pull the mic down off the desk? <laughs> 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 Cron 4's Alicia Reed tracked down people who knew him. <laughs> so, okay, what's three going to be? I got to do something different. I got to get, I mean, it has to be so different so that something like that, maybe? Okay, that'll be two. So that's the floor manager who's telling him where to look. New tonight at 10, it's a social media website that connects people in the neighborhood. Well, some say it's a good tool to spread community news. Okay, what page is next? <laughs> well, the wait is over. The wildly popular Taiwanese Denfeng Taifung dumplings, uh, they have arrived now in the Bay Area. The first such restaurant in the Bay Area opened its doors <laughs> today in San Jose. And as Cron 4's Rob Flavido shows us, it did not disappoint. Yes, that name of those dumplings are. <laughs> you can see the little, it's called IFD, so they got, everyone has a plug in their ear so that the director can talk to them, or the executive producer of this group. So he is clicking through all the automated stuff that plays the graphics. So Josh, will you just want me to ad lib something here and then just go? You can just say another in-depth story. I'll put that in. Oh, okay. So they're discussing what goes in the prompter. There's a lot of ad living. We had a couple of cron sort of overnight people, no, they were really early morning people came in, Andrea brought them, and, and they were saying they, they improvise almost everything ad lib. Uh, even though they have stuff in the prompter, uh, they said, no one wants us to read that. They want us just to be like, have a nice, friendly conversation. So that's what they're doing. 10 o'clock news is a lot more precise, but obviously there's a little ad lib. And here is what we are working on for tomorrow. Another Prom 4 in-depth story. We hope you join us then. All right, so we're going to come back here to the um, uh, weather transition to embark an air camera. Are we done? Are we done? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we are. Okay. I'm being told that we are finished. We're finished now? That's it. They need the control room. We are deep. Get out. 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 Great job, everybody. Oh, we got a lot of little things to work on. There's a ton of little things to, 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 to work through, but uh, for the most part, it flowed pretty well. You new guys in trouble. You're gonna break the new guy. So, what did you think? It's still complicated, but yeah, it's, it's much small. Yeah, it's right. a lot less people. <laughs> Yeah, there's not, try one here. not that many people, but it, it looks like it's you know pretty high pressure. And yeah. That whole like him looking in the wrong camera. I thought there were lights on top of the cameras for you to look at. There usually are. They're called tally. So yeah. Like, but that's I one know, problem. Yeah. Like they had that could have been. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. It seemed like they had to define what was camera I two need to go for take him. Over the station. And <laughs> 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 yeah, right. That's why they. <laughs> they're losing. Yeah. Well, Gary Radnich says. Gary Radnich says you got your CCSF degree. We'll put Put you on, come on there in. Go. That's go. it. That's it. Um, and then there's also a segment here with uh, a reporter out in the field. So this could uh, be two cars continued to shoot at each other apparently, and we know that police made one arrest at this shell station. But this all happened probably about three hours ago, and the scene is completely clear. Uh, it's breaking news. Everything's crazy. They're still working out the kinks. JR. Mark, Daniel, all covering Warriors. JR will provide a look live on fans, reaction, who's playing, etc. at 6, because the game's at 6. So that was the assignment desk, which sometimes looks a little bit more impressive than just a little whiteboard. Like KTVU, it's like a big thing with a real desk and everything, and they've got, like, they have all the police scanners that they're listening to to see if there, anything is, like, happening. They'll send a crew out and stuff. But, but it's still pretty essential. You've only got... 
you know, a certain number of folks that you can send out, certain number of trucks, and you're always kind of evaluate, okay, what does our audience want to know about, what's breaking news and stuff. So that little whiteboard is actually a super important thing as to what goes out on the air. And then from the point of view of, of uh, okay, so these are, these are the remote trucks, right, that beam their signal back. Long day. To... Tonight, yes, the 10. Yeah. We're excited. Yeah. We're all excited. We're well, excited because we're lit sports is leading the very first 10. Sports is the first one. Sorry, I'm confusing everything by jumping around. Um, so, but from the perspective of this type of person who is, you know, a reporter who goes out, she said it's already three hours ago that the shooting happened. Everything's being cleared away. She basically has nothing to show on camera. So that is stressful. That sucks because she's supposed to be out there creating the image that, you know, anything that happens, we're out there right away reporting on it, you know, and she's there and it's already gone. It's all, there's not even yellow tape probably. So, so that, that's tough, you know. So they're going to have to make a shot with the, with the thing in the background and she's going to have to work a little extra hard to get more information to make it seem worthwhile to even put it on the air because there's no longer any impressive visuals. There's not police cars or anything like that or bodies being removed. There's just her. So she's got to have more information to give in order to make this seem like worth being on the air, you know. And, and so a lot of criticism of television news is like pseudo live, you know, because it's like you'll often, as a reporter like that, or they'll be on the 10 o'clock news, they'll be standing in the dark in front of some business, and it's like, well, six hours ago, something happened here, uh, and they're, you know, they're very often they, they're, they try to give the feeling that things are live without really much worthwhile going on, you know, because uh, they're there a little bit late. So, you know, that's where Facebook Live or any kind of live streaming service, which can, you know, go to a citizen journalist or can go to anybody on the scene, really has an edge over typical old television. And that's, that's a problem for them, you know. Uh, so here we are at the Warriors. Glasses that you're wearing? Uh, well, it's not luck. It's still genius. It's luck. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, we worried about uh, them beating the Warriors at all. Nah, I don't see it, man. The Warriors are too strong. The good news, at first it kind of sounded so, like I need... Did that look like fun? Yeah. Come on, that looks like fun, doesn't it? Yeah. So, so there's more and more of that kind of one-man band type of, uh, and she's a one, a one woman band too. You know, they typically they'll do their own camera. They'll just, you know, have a pretty simple mic set up, and uh, uh, you know, th again, they're not doing, uh, they're not interviewing, you know, uh, governor of California or something. They're out there just working with people, getting a sense of community on the air. You know, that's that's really what they're doing. She may be pursuing, you know deeper stories, but uh, so this, you know, when we talk about one man band, again, at a, when I was working, I would have been a sound guy or a camera operator and there would have been a journalist there not touching the camera, but now everything is done by the one person to cut costs. Uh, but in a way it is kind of fun because you're still out there getting the, you know, direct contact with everybody. And um, NAB had tons of little backpack kits now. Uh, so. Um, you basically have a little backpack with uh, a cell phone connection, which will have like four SIM cards oh, in it, wow. so that it can send the video. It, first of all, it's reliable enough, so you'll never lose your signal if you got four, you know, streams going at once. And then also, it's better bandwidth, so there's less compression, so you get good broadcast quality off of that. That's crazy. So there were tons of those. For, you know, that was, that's a big product. That's, I'd say, like, there were tons of booths with that, and then tons of booths with video compression, like it was, which was so boring. But you know, there'd just be like a split screen, and our type of compression gives you 10 10 percent less data with the same quality. It was like. Anyhow, but this looked like, you know, really very, very useful. Because you used to have those satellite, well, not satellite, those microwave trucks, right? We saw that with the huge antenna and everything. This completely replaces it. It can all be sent through cellular. And, and, but you just need enough connections to move broadcast quality video, you know, through it. <coughs> 5G, I bet everyone will be able to do it, you know, right away. So, so this is another, another opportunity, you know. No, let's have they, they're being really nice by letting me get this video, so I'm just kind of going to get this shot, get out of here. Dad Nation in the house! We love the Warriors! 
What time is Crown Four News on? Shit! Shooting, Shooting it on his phone, even. <laughs> the predictions here for tonight? A win. A, big, a resounding win. I'm not concerned. We've seen it before, and we're going to handle it uh, just fine like we have before. Prediction for tonight? Wired. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I found that when people are really Big news, huh? <laughs> Sometimes when they're really high, they just don't want to talk. Mm -hmm. That guy back there is a little high. <laughs> I, you know, I don't get you know as much involvement. You know, folks are really hot. Drunk <laughs> ones are good though. Drunk ones are good. Another freeway shooting. The Pittsburgh City Council will decide whether to add cameras to Highway Four. The project is. As I'm going to grab my laptop. And we're going to go inside the meeting. And we're going to put our cameras where it needs to go. I'm going to grab a seat, whether it's in a chair or on the floor. Meeting gets started. Unfortunately, before we could get to this council meeting on May 11th, another shooting occurred on Highway 4. Day 4, 0, yes. So, Jeff, thank you very much. Yes. Detective Station has the ability to log on, access these cameras uh, from their, their worktop, their workstations, as well as our mobile phones. So this is live? This is like a live video feed here? This is, uh, this is live. This is currently live feed out. Extremely zoomed in, obviously. Do you like a whole six piece on this room? This is the room where police can watch more than 200 cameras throughout the city of Pittsburgh, and soon they'll be able to watch Highway 4. It would be nice if the printer was working. I'm trying to print. It's a little too much cross-cutting, but... What do you think about the job that she's doing, this reporter? Not easy. It's tough. Not easy. It's tough. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. like, it seems like she's constantly having to validate her employment, you know? It's well, like, she's wearing a lot of hats. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Like, uh, and, and she's doing a bunch of things. Like, um, she's recording her stand up before she actually goes and gets anything else. So here she doesn't even have all her material yet, and yeah. she's already doing, like, the beginning of the of the of the news piece, right? Which seems to be about surveillance over in Oakland. I would say it seems to be like that. And uh, so then she's now she's grabbing all her gear. She's the you know doing the camera. She's doing all of it. So now there's a news conference. So this is like a, a good half of the time as a reporter, you're covering events that are already scheduled. So the the police will not do this for you one on one. They invite everybody in and they have that. But you've if you've done your work. You make sure that you can talk to the PR people afterwards in order to f get more for your story. Look at that, okay? She's writing her script like as it's coming in, basically. Uh, when I was over at KTVU, when our class was over at KTVU, uh, you could see that, you know, a lot of them were writing into their cell phone and they'd basically do the stand up and then hit send and they would send the script off their phone to the editor over at KTVU who would get that and the stand-up that she had done, they'd, they'd have that right away through these like mobile link-ups. And they would start editing that piece before she even moves to get back to the station. They have all the bits, and the editor is putting it back together to go on the news. So it, you know, to me, I, I get a little bit excited you know, at, at these, the, you know, the technical aspect of it. And also, she's got to you know, put this thing together and, yeah, while she's on the job, you know? So this explains why people want to do this, you know? <laughs> I think. So then, and then we saw her like back there in the, uh, in the police control room, basically looking it over, right? And again, she's got to come up with, she, she looks, she asks questions, and then right away she's got to turn around and kind of digest this for her this audience. Is, uh, this is live. Shoot herself. I mean, you know, I was it. Extremely zoomed in, obviously. There she goes. Do you like a whole sweeps piece on this room? This is the room where police can watch more than 200 cameras throughout the city of Pittsburgh, and soon they'll be able to watch Highway 4. It would be nice. So it's over at Pittsburgh. But anyway, that, you know. That, that to me is it's one of the most challenging jobs that are out there, I think. And it's pretty cool to see. So we do have some uh, um, graduates of our program who's doing this type of thing. I think uh, the person who most recently made this jump is Sheree Honeycutt. So she's basically doing exactly uh, what that, uh, that reporter from Cron is doing. 
Uh, she's doing it in Missouri, so typically if you want to do this type of job, uh, you, you don't, unless you're very lucky, you don't start off in San Francisco Bay Area because it's such a big market. Uh, um, so Sheree went, uh, she's in Kansas City now. She was even further kind of out in a smaller local station to start with after she got out of, well, she did this program. She went to San Francisco State uh, and then she went to work in a small station in Missouri and now she's in Kansas City and I bet you anything in a few years she'll be back here at one of our local stations because that's typically the way it works. You got to go far away, kind of prove yourself and then slowly, you know, make the job applications and move back. And, and it does happen. You don't, you don't get stuck, you know, somewhere necessarily. So, so that's how she did it. And I got to say, having known her like when she was 19 and just coming in, you know, uh, smart and kind of driven, knew what she wanted. And also she, surprisingly, you know, she was in musical theater. And so she just had a certain amount of practice at performing. So a lot of this is, you know, you're smart enough to know what's news and what's not. You can write well enough so that, you know, you can quickly turn something around and just clearly state it for your audience. And then you're comfortable on camera. And then, you know, you're willing to move to Missouri or, you know, do whatever, get up at 4 a.m. for, you know, a couple of years or something so that you're there at 6 ready to go out and do this, you know, uh, that those are the kinds of things which you need in order to do this job, basically. You know? um, so, and it's real nice to see some of our, our students uh, uh, succeeding on this level. We also have students, uh, one over at KTVU, who was, um, uh, what was Sammy doing? Uh, I wonder if I can find, he just went, uh, let's see, can we up? This is the man. I've been bragging about you in a couple of years. Uh, <laughs> you already know. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, S Sammy was working on a show, uh, sort of a mid-morning show, booking guests and, um, uh, you know, so basically assisting the producer at what was actually going to be in the show day in and day out. I noticed that he seems to have just moved to Tracy and he's working in another business now. So that's, that can happen, you know. Um, especially when you take a look at it and say, ooh, I got a family, I want to buy a house. Uh, this, you know, may not, I may not be able to find a job uh, in exactly what I want to do. But he may be back, I don't know. Um, who else do we know who's come through either of these programs? Uh, Kristen. There she is, but can we get a, uh, so that's her Twitter, but, whoops, sorry. She is working either for Cumulus or for Entercom uh, as a kind of national sales coordinator. Let's just see. Let's try her at Cumulus and uh, let's not go to images. But, uh, she won't be in the news. Uh, oh, there it is. National clients. Oh, God. Okay, forget it. <laughs> LinkedIn. <laughs> uh, so what her job would be basically would be um, coordinating the ad sales on a national level for Cumulus. Uh, so uh, and, and at a local station here in San Francisco, that would mean like people call up and say, we want, you know, a thousand spots between now and Christmas and let's, let's work out, you know, how much it'll cost and where it'll go. Um, she's been doing that for almost 10 years. So, that's how long I know. so, so there are um, operational jobs like this and, um, you can, you know, there's, there's cumulus jobs. You can find, especially now after, you know, taking this course or talking to people and stuff, you can, you know, you'll sort of know what the positions are all about. Um, but uh, on. just hoping there's an easy way to look and see like what kind of jobs are currently available in our area, all cities. Let's go. Again, you got a better chance if you move to a smaller market. There are six jobs here. I bet most of them are in sales. 
Oh, there's an on-air talk show host job. That is pretty rare. That's cool. Part-time board operator. So that's somebody who would be working overnight, uh, making sure that the broadcast goes well. That's definitely an entry-level position. Promotions, account executive. That's in the ad part of sales. Yeah, right. So you can see them. They're up here. Programming, what does a producer do? And web digital. So you'll often find most, most of the jobs that I see in, in radio stations and stuff, uh, they're either sales because that's a constant turnaround. People you know, get discouraged. Uh, and then there's also, uh, there's always somebody who's involved in digital. Um, so those are, those are openings. And then I just want to see what a producer actually does here. What they, oh, for KNBR, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Because again, you want to be out uh, talking to the public and stuff. So that, that takes personnel on game nights and stuff like that. So that's interesting. There, see, that's what Sammy was doing, book and pre-interview guests and stuff like that. There's always need for that, just to make sure we get on there. Qualifications, what do you have to have done? Bachelor's degree in communications. So you know that people get out of here, they often go to San Francisco State. That is our you know, pathway. And a lot of classes, including this one, transfers directly over there. You don't have to retake this class. You already got credit for it. So that's, and that's one of your classes for the major. So you know, that, that's important, I think. At least three years experience as a producer or assistant. That's pretty cool in a smaller market or college station. So that's a doable thing. Again, you may have to move away a little bit, but you wind up coming back. And so at KNBR, there is a San Francisco State graduate. I think it's Ryan Covey. So he was in my class way back when. Not that I taught him anything. But actually, I think Ryan is uh, <clears throat> oh, at the games. There he is. Whoops. Yeah. There I can't get into LinkedIn. <laughs> I really got to enter my stuff. So we have graduates all over the place, and they will want to help you if you say that you were at City College or if you decide to go to San Francisco State. Uh, so it's doable, and um, it's, it's exciting, but it requires sacrifice and hard work and uh, uh, you know, the smarts that you guys all have, for sure. So I don't know what, enough for today, right? <laughs> Anyone got anything to say about it? Nope. You're good. Okay. <laughs> so uh, this was Thursday. Cool. So next week we're getting into our uh, industry news. So over the weekend, you should definitely do this before Tuesday, right? So on the 25th, which is next Thursday, we're doing our 60 second industry news. On the Tuesday, we will iron out any bugs. So you want to think about this before then. So you know if there are any bugs, we need to iron them out, right? So go, go to Google News and search your you know, favorite entertainment company and see what the news that comes up about them is and see you know, which, one, which one do you want to uh, uh, kind of uh, summarize for us in 60 seconds, okay? And as we talked about, it's much easier to go to Google News and find out that way than to think of something you may have organically heard about through your network or whatever else. This is, this is much more directly what you want. OK, guys, have a great weekend. We will see you, and I'll grade those quizzes and get the results up for you by the end of the weekend. Thanks so much. OK, cheers, guys.